What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with the ultimate credit farm guide. Yeah buddy, come on, it's just another Yindex video, huh? No, I, I will be showing you several ways on how to farm credits, and Index happens to be one of them. So farming credits can be easily done with any frame, but some frames just offer better utility, and having a credit booster will of course make credit farming faster and more efficient, but that doesn't mean you have to get one. Now the one thing that people don't know is that the first mission after reset, basically the first mission you do of the new day will grant you double credits, which stacks with your credit booster and yes, different sources of credit boosters stack with each other. So for example, let's say there is a double credit weekend and it's the first mission of the day along with your own credit booster and a Smita Kavat charm buff and of course let's not forget Chroma's fourth ability all of those will stack. So if used wisely, you will earn a shit tons of credits. Now the best way to utilize your first mission of the day double credit booster is by doing one of either two missions. One of the missions is super useful for newer players, Samony on Ceres. It is a dark sector mission, so the first part of all the dark sector missions will grant you a certain reward. Basically the first five waves of a defense or the first five minutes of a survival. And Samony on Ceres happens to be a defense, so the first five waves will grant you 20,000 credits, and with a credit booster you get double, and we stack that with the first mission of the day booster. Extract after 5 ways and repeat for more credits. But we don't stop there ladies and gentlemen, we grab ourselves a Necros along with a Sakura Lecta. Now Necros's third ability will have enemy corpses drop extra loot, and credits being one of them. And the Sakura Lecta is a syndicate version of a melee, with a special effect that when you kill enemies with this weapon, they will drop extra credits. Of course, you can add a little spice to that by taking a Smita Kavat with the charm mod equipped. Make sure to do the mission in public as it will have more mobs which will yield more credits. So a mission that gives 20,000 credits can easily give you 100k if done right. Now the same concept can be applied to the second type of mission and that is the sorties. Sorties give you decent amount of credits. The last sortie grants the highest amount of credits and of course your reward. So what you can do is save the last sortie for your first mission of the day and get even more credits. But if you have a lich, well, you lose some. So veterans of the game use these simple techniques to passively gain large amounts of credits. Now the intermediate way to farm credits is of course the index. The index is located on Neptune. This is where you gamble away credits to earn even more credits. Frames like Rhino, Hildren, and Revenant shine as the carriers. But I personally advise new players to use Rhino and Hildren as they are easier to maintain. So what you can do as these frames is kill enemies and pick up the green items they drop. These are the index points. The main objective is to collect points and hand them in before the enemy scores. And the more points you collect, you will be under the effects of financial stress, a debuff lowering your health and drains your energy. Hildren, Rhino, and Revenant are perfect for this because they have ways to negate damage. Hildren has shields and can replenish them and does not have to worry about energy. Rhino pops his iron skin once and is good for an entire round. Revenant has to be wary of his Mesmer skin though, not a frame that new players should use in the index. So for the Rhino build, this is your go-to iron skin build. The aura has to be enemy radar, as when in the index you will not have the use of your sentinel or companion. Power strength will be at 348% with the two umbo mods, power drift, transient fortitude, blind rage, and augur secrets, gladiator aegis, and umbral fiber for the armor, as Rhino's iron skin scales of power strength and armor. Ironclad charge to multiply your armor value when you charge into enemies. Once you charge into one or two enemies, press 2 and take a little damage during the invulnerable state and you're set for the entire round. Arcane Guardian is there if you take a little damage before you charge to boost your armor and no point using Arcane Tanker because you cannot use your gear wheel items in the index and Iron Shrapnel to recast your Iron Skin. As for Hildren, I will have the same aura. Handspring of the Exilus for the knockdown recovery, spending less time on your butt is a huge DPS increase. And the build is stacked up with shields and power strength. Redirection, Augur Cord, and Prime Vigor. You can use the normal Vigor, and when using the normal Vigor, you will lose 450 shields, so you're not losing much. And no, the Augur set bonus does not work with Hildren. This is just to increase the shield pool, that's all. Adaptation to reduce the damage taken, Rolling Guard for vulnerability, 
after a dodge roll. Power strength at 254%, this has you drain 63% of the enemy's armor and shields, and grant you a lot of overshields. Stretch for the range. Increasing the range of pillage from 8 to 11.6 meters. Aegis and barrier in the arcanes just make her even harder to kill. And now for the weapon that is being used to one-shot the enemies is a kit gun, which is a modular secondary built from the catch moon chamber, haymaker grip, and the splat loader. And the elements are set to radiation as the enemies in the index are mostly with alloy armor, which are weak to radiation. This has raw damage and crits. Using the Pax Charge Arcane allows you to forget about ammo for good, as it turns your magazine into a battery, basically having infinite ammo. Now you can replace the prime version of these mods with normal ones and it will still do a lot of damage. With 100% crit chance, 4.8 times crit damage and 90 5k radiation, these guys don't stand a chance. Lethal momentum to increase the fall off range, this mod saves the catch moon. Alright, now for a more advanced credit farm, and that is the Profit Taker. You would need to be max rank with the Solaris United Syndicate to be able to start the Profit Taker bounties. Now, why is this considered better? It's because you can take Sentinels and Companions, and in this case, I'll be running with a Smita Kavat. So, if the kitty is nice, it will give you that juicy resource booster, which in turn could have you earn 1 million credits with a single Profit Taker run. The Profit Taker is hard for some, I get it. It does require you to be semi-geared as you need several types of elements and physical damage types and a variety of weapons. And your operator does play a role in this as well. You would need to damage the shields with a specific element or physical damage type indicated on the top of the Profit Taker's head. If you do not have the specific damage type, switch into your operator and damage her with your amp to change the required damage type to a new one. Once the shields are depleted, deploy your arc gun and damage the limbs and head. Destroy the pylons and that's basically the fight. The frame that excels in this fight is Chroma, as he provides tankiness and a damage boost with one ability. And let's not forget about Effigy, it grants you 2 times credit booster. For those who do not have an Umbral Forma on your Chroma, you can build him like so. Steel Charge in the Aura, just for the mod capacity, Handspring in the X list for the knockdown recovery, and Pain Threshold for the stagger recovery. Trust me, these two will save you. Power Strength at 309% with the two Umbral mods, Blind Rage and Transient Fortitude. This will give you 849% Fury buff and a 1081% armor increase. Having a minimum of 300% power strength on your build will have your Chroma do insane amounts of damage with Vex Armor, so you can remove base damage mods from your weapons, like Serration, Hornet Strike, and Pressure Point, as the Fury buff from Vex Armor works like a base damage mod. So you can replace the raw damage mods with more elements or utility. Hunter Adrenaline is there to replenish energy when you take health damage, Narrow Minded for the duration, and Adaptation for the added defenses. I will also be using Heat as my element to grant Chroma a good health pool. The best arc guns for the fight are Corvus and Imperator Vandal. I just prefer the Imperator Vandal. This build is specific to Chroma. It's built for crits, fire rates along with radiation and cold, since the Profit Taker limbs are alloy armor and take 75% more damage from radiation and 25% from cold. This will annihilate the limbs within seconds. And if your cat is nice, you will get that juicy double resource buff. But unfortunately, I didn't get one. So as soon as you take down the Profit Taker, go underneath her booty and pop Effigy when she is about to finish her dying animation and earn 250,000 credits. And if you have a credit booster, you earn 500,000 when you extract. So Profit Taker is the more rewarding as you will easily earn a million credits if you get that charm buff. Alright guys, so this is the best way to farm credits in Warframe, from a beginner standpoint to a more advanced setup. Alright folks, I hope this video has helped you out, and if it did, feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more, do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.